Today on the Homebrew Challenge, we're going to take a look at the history of porter. Not, not yet, as I brew a pre-prohibition porter. I'm on my way to Atlantic Brew Supply for a notable ingredients pickup. This is the bag of ingredients that will get me to 99 beers. And I have to say a big thank you to Todd from Atlantic Brew Supply, who every week provides me with one of these bags of pre-measured and pre-milled ingredients for the recipes and really helps make my life easy. So we're going to be mashing this beer at 152 Fahrenheit. That is 67 Celsius, let's get it in. Now the other significant thing from, oh, this is smelling good, from just picking up the ingredients is it means that I've now made all of my recipes. Uh, believe me, I did not enter this challenge with 99 beer recipes already made, but now I've got all the ingredients. It does mean that I've figured out how I want to make each one of my beers. I think it would be interesting to go back and look at some of the earlier recipes I made and see if I'd make any changes based on just the experience of really dialing in what I think I like in a beer and what I think works for me, but I don't really see me going back and brewing the whole 99 again just to see if I could come up with a better recipe. Mash is not looking exceptionally dark just from the grains yet, but that's gonna change. And I will leave this mashing for about an hour. So the recipe for this beer, well, what makes a pre-prohibition porter pre-prohibition? Basically it's six row malt and flaked corn. Those are the characteristic ingredients. So I'm looking to build a beer here with an original gravity of 1057, around five and a half percent ABV. Now 68% of the grist is going to be six row malt, and then 17% is going to be flaked corn. To that, I am adding 9% of flaked rye, 4% of caramel 60, and 2% of carafe 2. So let's talk a little bit about the history of the beer style of porter. Emoji Martin, take it away. Thanks, Martin. The story begins 300 years ago. This fella is Ralph Harwood, a London brewer in the 1730s and the father of Porter. He became famous for his beer that he called Entire. Back then, beer was often served as a blend of different beers, each poured from a different cask. Each cask was called a butt, and each beer that came from that butt was a thread. A mug of beer might consist of multiple threads. Entire became a stable of the blue-collar clientele of the Blue Last pub, many of whom worked as porters. Soon the beer itself became known by the folks that drank it. Porter. It's a nice story, but, mm, well, it's unlikely to actually be true. For a start, this isn't Ralph Harwood. I couldn't find a picture of him. This is Arthur Guinness, founder of Guinness Stout. Beer writers, including Michael Jackson, have found mentions of Porter dating back to before Harwood's creation, and historians think the whole Porter origin story may trace back to the misinterpretation from a letter written about beer taxation in the 1720s. It seems more likely that Porter emerged as an aged version of brown beer. But what is likely true is that the name Porter did indeed come from the beer's popularity with the porters who worked carrying goods throughout London. Oh. 
Now for the hops for this beer, I'm actually just using a single packet of hops. I am using Galena. Now Galena was developed in Idaho in 1968, so not really authentic pre-prohibition, but I think this will fit the style quite well. So I'm gonna add half of this in at the start of the boil at 60 minutes. And then I'm going to throw in the other half with five minutes to go just to give a little bit of the character of Galena, which the packet describes as sweet pear, pineapple, lime, black currant, grapefruit. Just using it in a little bit of moderation, I think will just give it a really nice aroma. And looking overall for a IBU here of about 28 for the style. Now this will be my fourth porter as part of my 99 beers and the previous three well they've all been quite different. I started out with a Baltic porter which is quite high gravity and also brewed as a lager. The beer has uh, it came down to 1021 which is a robust 8.1% beer. This one I think is a combination of roastiness and quite a bit of sweetness. After that was one of my favorite dark beer styles, English Porter, where for some reason, although I hadn't even made it yet, I decided to give American Porter a bit of a ribbing. I can definitely taste that it's a Porter, but it is more subtle than an American one. It still has like that punch of a Porter. Yeah, absolutely. So just like real life, you've got the English understated and the American, woo, look at us kind of thing. <laughs> I think with porters that, that definitely goes uh, with it as well. And then finally, I did come on to the beer style of American Porter and really quite enjoyed it. Something that's a little bit different to the English Porter that we brewed. And I think that really all comes down to the fact there's more hops in this. Okay. Um, and definitely in the finish of the beer, I am getting a bit of bitterness, a um, yeah. bit of hot flavour to it, mm -hmm. which wasn't present in, in the English one. Yeah, I can yeah I can taste a little bit of the bitter with like the mouthfeel, like mm. the aftertaste. So how will pre-prohibition porter stack up against those? One way to find out. So I'm quite enjoying this whole clean in place and transfer in place system that I tried out a couple of weeks ago. I, uh, I used the CIP ball just to spray some star sand in this uh, fermenter here. And then I transferred directly from my plate chiller straight into the top of this fermenter. And this just sits here, I didn't have to move it. Now in terms of yeast for this beer, I'm using California lager yeast. This is white yeast 2112. And I'm gonna be fermenting this one fairly warm for a, for a lager. Uh, this is designed typically for sort of California common style beers. You'll, you'll see this yeast style used a lot for that. And I'm gonna apply it to this porter as well. So I'm gonna ferment at 64 Fahrenheit or around 18 Celsius. That was it, just one clamp to do up rather than having to put the glycol in and then clamp this lid down and all that. This is uh, much more convenient. Okay, so we're gonna leave this fermenting and uh, come back to this in about four weeks for the tasting. So it's tasting time and welcoming Dean to the tasting. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. <laughs> so we were just chatting before we got started here. I think neither of us has tried a pre-prohibition porter before. I know, this will be a first for me for sure. Yeah. So in terms of color, I mean, it's dark porter looking kind of beer, isn't it? It's very dark, very inky almost. Oh, that's nice. You could tell me what this smells of? I'm not sure if I could tell you what this smells <laughs> of. <laughs> I smell some roast and it's a, a, a very nice, no, no, uh, no discernible hop aroma. It's not a, it's not a hoppy smell. To me, yeah, kind of. Uh, I'm thinking English porter when I'm smelling this because there isn't the hoppy right. hoppiness to it. Right. Um, like you say, roasty, bit of malt, 
maybe a little bit of sweetness. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, all right, well, let's go for it. <laughs> let's give it a give it a taste. That's nice, quite nice. Nicely carbonated. Kind of a good balance between the um, the maltiness. So it's not subtle, the, the very subtle maltiness and the roast, it, but it's not bitter by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, the thing that makes it pre-prohibition is the fact that there's corn in here, which I would never think to add to this sort of style. I don't know if you could pick that up in the, in I, the flavor. I, I'm, I'm not sure that I detect it. It's subtle. Yeah, in the, in, in the lager, I think it was quite obvious in the porter. Right, I, I don't I don't detect it, so. Not so much, no. So I want to ask you a little bit about you because you actually owned a brewery. I, I was one of the co-owners of a, of a brewery called Thirsty Nomad Brewing in Charlotte, North Carolina. That must have been a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I learned a ton. I was uh, one of the assistant brewers there. And so I got a chance every uh, every week or so to, uh, to spend my Saturdays brewing beer. <laughs> well, so. Dean, thank you very much for, for oh, tasting. Thank you for allowing me to participate, Martin. I appreciate it. Uh, it's been great to have you here. And, and next week we're transitioning into a beer, which, well, I think it's probably going to amp up the weirdness a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. So um, until then, <laughs> cheers. Cheers.